Cars fans, uh, here is the newest project that just got pulled into the uh, shop tonight. Got it off the trailer. It is a 1948 uh, CJ2A Jeep Willys. Uh, it's got the uh, famous Go Devil Flathead 4 engine. Um, you can see it right there. Um, it's 134 cubic inches, I believe. And uh, just a man, just a stout engine. I think it only kicks out like 60, 70 horsepower, something like that. Uh, but for something as light as this Jeep, uh, it worked great. Uh, obviously four wheel drive. It's got the two speed transfer case. It's a, I think it's a, I think it's a three speed. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I haven't driven it uh, in a really long time. The reason I say I haven't driven it in a really long time is I was with the original owner, um, or say the original owner, uh, the, the owner that had it in the last uh, six or seven years um, that uh, I bought it off of. I was at the auction uh, with him when he bought this uh, vehicle. And what interesting about it was this was a fully restored Jeep. I mean, it, it was, I, I wouldn't say it was nut and bolt, but it was almost nut and bolt. I mean, this thing was almost perfect uh, when he bought it at the auction. Uh, if my memory serves me right, this was restored by a guy in Arkansas. Um, he was Arkansas or, or South Missouri uh, that kind of specializes in uh, Willie's Jeeps. And um, again, when it came across the auction block, man, I, I told him, he, he was really interested in it for, for use on his farm, uh, deer hunting, lease, you know, that kind of stuff. Instead of getting a UTV, he wanted something a little bit bigger that he could drive on the roads if he had to go up to run up to the store, that kind of stuff. And um, this just fit the bill for it. So we went ahead and popped on it and bought it. So I was there when he bought it. Uh, I drove it home. Um, I, I uh, had it at my place for two or three weeks till he came and picked it up, took it to the farm. And I just don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's a three speed, but I just don't remember. Fun little Jeep. I mean, uh, the, the, re the restoration uh, upgraded lights to LEDs and things like that and just kind of put new tires on it, a new paint job, all the gauges are brand new, gas tank was new, uh, just really did a good job at the overall restoration. Now, it has been sitting out in basically uh, 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 about a 500 acre uh, farm, or actually I think it's a little bigger than that, Five uh, farm for the last six, seven years, um, being used as a transport back and forth from the lodge to the uh, deer stands. Uh, going out and putting deer corn in the feeders, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's been beat. It has been beat on. It's been definitely put away wet. Um, no maintenance whatsoever. But what's interesting about it is um, this Jeep in the last seven years or so um, has traveled a total of 392 miles. Um, and I, I, if I remember right, that actually is not correct in the fact that when they did the restoration on this Jeep, um, I want to say at the auction, I think the, the, the Jeep had like 90 miles on it, on the odometer, so it's gone about 300 miles. Not a lot of miles in seven years, um, but it's been a lot of hard miles. Uh, a lot of sand, a lot of mud. Um, I took it to the car wash while it was on the trailer last night, and you can see some of the, the red clay right there, Oklahoma red clay, but I, I washed off a lot of it. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I've got a lot of it off, but Man, this just, it, it just sat there for several years. Um, good thing is it wasn't stored outside. Uh, it was stored in a, in a big sea container uh, when it was not in use, but you can imagine that the temperature fluctuations, you know, get very cold, it, it, you know, gets very hot back and forth in that sea container all year round. Probably got driven, gosh, I would say five to 10 times a year. Uh, you know, probably at that, you know, at best. Um, so not a lot of use, but you can tell that the, when the restoration was done, the engine was rebuilt. It was all painted. It was all shiny. It looked great. You know, new components, uh, voltage regulator, those kind of things. Um, it was just, it was a good looking vehicle, uh, when we first bought it and now it's kind of trashed, uh, you know, to a degree. Good thing is I think most of it's just cosmetic, um, 
you know, just needs a good wash. Uh, it needs just some tweaks here and there. I can tell you the things that I've found so far are just loose bolts, you know, things that it just kind of rattled its way uh, loose. Uh, off, uh, obviously, after a fresh restoration, um, it was just having, you know, you just run it on these really rough roads for a while and uh, bolts start loosening up. So that's really what I've been finding so far. All new exhaust system. It just It's just dirty. It just needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be uh, once over as far as uh, just making sure all the bolts and stuff are tight. Uh, the gas still smelled good. Uh, good th cool thing about it was uh, when I took it out of the sea container, me and a buddy went up and got it. Uh, we were we bet lunch on whether it would start. Uh, so we brought jumper cables, starting fluid, you know that kind of stuff, because um, we knew the battery was going to be dead. Uh, but we just didn't know what kind of condition it was. Uh, the previous owner told me he probably had driven it maybe two years ago uh, and hadn't driven it since. So didn't know if the mice had gotten in there and just eaten everything to to bits. Just really didn't know what we were getting into because we hadn't seen it in so long. Good thing about it was when we opened up the hood, everything looked intact. There was a little bit of mouse damage. Uh, you kind of see it back there, that little white wire that's exposed. They ate some of the insulation off. But overall, everything was really intact. Uh, didn't have any major issues. And uh, when we hooked up the jumper cables to it, it just cranked right over. Uh, I choked it. I cranked it again. Things started up, no problem was sitting there idling uh, while I was kind of taking some things. We had to move a tractor because the tractor was in front of it and we just had to put some stuff back in the sea container. Um, and so I was doing that. Uh, the tractor was running and um, I couldn't hear anything. And I, I don't know, it was probably running for about a minute or so, maybe two minutes, three minutes. Um, and then, it, then I looked back and I noticed that the, t the tailpipe, you know, I couldn't see anything coming out of the tailpipe anymore. Uh, cause it was really cold yesterday and sure enough it had died. And so I went over and, uh, we, we had to hook the jumper cables back up to it again. Cause we had already, you know, closed the hood and thought, well, we'll just be able to drive this thing on the trailer. No problem. Went back, you know, got everything hooked back up again, uh, cranked it maybe once and it was, it was kind of slow cranking and then it just went completely dead. Um, no power to the gauges, no power to the ignition, nothing. So I don't know if I blew a fuse somewhere or the voltage regulator went bad or maybe the ignition switch went bad, not really sure. Uh, so really that's where I'm at right now is just kind of diagnosing what's going on with this, with this Jeep. Getting the battery charged right now, got it on a trickle charger. Um, it's been on a trickle charger for a long time now and I'm only getting, I'm still only getting 25%. So probably um, that battery's just not, not good and it's not taking the charge. I'm going to try to jump it another way and get things going here and see if I can get it started. I don't know. Like I said, the, there's this thing is so simple that I um, have no idea what it may be. There's that ignition switch, which is right down in there. Uh, you, my fingertips on it. Then obviously you got the voltage regulator. It's a new, but uh, as you guys have probably all found out, if you've ever worked on one of these before, all this, this is just cheap crap coming out of China anymore. And these things go bad literally like every year. I don't know what the deal is. Um, so I'm going to start getting extra spares because those things go bad. And when they go bad, your car does nothing. It just sits there. Now I did notice just now as I'm taping, see that top of the coil, it's got a crack in the top case of that coil. Uh, so obviously I'm going to need a, a new coil. It'll probably still work, uh, but it is, it is cracked. I just now noticed that, but overall it's a pretty cool vehicle. Um, I'm excited about it. As I mentioned, it's got brand new tires on it. Um, it had a it had a brand new paint job on it. Um, overall, it's got a little bit of damage right there where the gas was going in, kind of flaked off. Inside, you got some problems. The seats, the seats are probably what's uh, jacked the most. Um, it, these were brand new. I remember uh, when we bought it, it was brand new upholstery. And I think just sitting in that seat container over the last six, seven years, it's just gotten dry and brittle and cracked. So I'm going to try to restore that uh, as best as I can, um, you know, just see if I can put some conditioner on it and see if it comes back, but I doubt it will. But all the all the bolts have backed out of the frame, and this uh, same thing on that one. I took that frame out so I could get access to this um, little hidey hole underneath here. Uh, good thing about it is I didn't have a lot of mouse damage to, a, to the wiring. A lot of the wiring is still intact. You can still see some of it underneath there, and obviously you got a bunch over there. Um, but this thing, this little cubby hole thing underneath the passenger seat was just full 
of a of a mouse nest. Uh, so I just got done cleaning that up. Um, I'm gonna uh, the like a lot of the rubber components. You can see this right here. This rubber boot. It's just you know from that sitting in that sea container and getting fried, getting so hot um, and then cold. It just just you know just cratered it. I mean, so I'm gonna get new boots. Try to get the seats back. Uh, if not, I can get those recovered. Not a big deal. And um, then just clean it up is really kind of where I'm going with this thing. I did notice right here uh, a little bit of Bondo work uh, started popping right there at that uh, where the kind of the cowl meets the fender passenger side. So I've got some Bondo, pretty thick stuff too. I mean, there's it's it's not not the little stuff. It's pretty thick. Um, not sure why they did it so thick right there. Uh, maybe there's a pretty big dent behind here that I just haven't discovered yet. That, that sounds like Bondo right there, but I don't know. Maybe they just did it to finish it out a little bit better, but, uh, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But I mean, overall in pretty good condition, uh, you know, just washing it up. I put some detailer on this fender, um, and put a rag to it and it cleaned up pretty good. Uh, so it's, you know, overall it just needs a good hand washing and I think it'll, it'll make it, make it look a lot better. Engine runs good. It wasn't smoking uh, when we started it up yesterday. Um, and it just, I think, oh, it, you know, it's just ready to go. Um, you know, I'm going to fix a few little things here and there. But this is, uh, for anybody that's interested, this is a flip uh, for me. Um, it, it will be a, a Jeep that I just purchased. Uh, I actually bought it a year ago. I uh, paid the guy money uh, a year ago. And then just have not had a time had time to go up there and get it. Um, it's about two hours away from my house, and it just it was you know again not knowing what condition it was and getting a trailer and you know I had a buddy go with me and uh, just to make sure we could get it out and and um, so I paid him a year ago and he never did even get the title transferred over uh, to well he got the title I'm sorry he got the title transferred over to his name but he never did the VIN check. Uh, so the, he doesn't even have the title in Oklahoma. If it comes from an out of state um, or comes from out of state, you have to do what's called a VIN check. And um, he never did do that because the, the Jeep never made it uh, to town. I mean, I didn't do it, obviously, whenever it was sitting at my shop because I didn't own it. And then when he came and picked it up, he just took it straight to um, straight to the farm. So he never did take it to uh, DMV to get the VIN check. Well, I did that yesterday. And so he'll be getting the title in about a week. Then he can sign it over to me, uh, and we're, we're friends. I mean, so I'm not worried about him not doing that. Um, and uh, it's just one of those things where once I get the title, once it's cleaned up, once it's running, uh, I'll probably drive it around in the field. I'm not even going to get it insured. Uh, I'll probably have to bring the tag up to up to date. Uh, obviously, when I do the title change over to me, uh, but I'm going to teach my girls how to drive a stick shift. Uh, obviously, this being a three speed, so uh, my girls will get to drive this out in the field and kind of learn how to drive. Um, a manual vehicle and a, truly a manual vehicle. There is no power assist anything on this thing, um, so they'll have a good time driving this. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna flip it. It'll be a it'll be a Jeep that I can uh, pass on to somebody else who uh, obviously can use it more than me. And uh, I've got, as you can see, enough projects on hand. So this will be a very short term project. I'll be updating um, you guys throughout the process and giving you guys uh, obviously a sneak peek at uh, whenever we get it running and driving and all that good stuff. Uh, the cool thing is, is that um, I this kind of goes along with my uh, my uh, truck series in the fact that I know it's dark, guys. Sorry about this, but uh, I got to use my Chevy yesterday uh, to tow this bad boy. So I know you can't see it, but it's got the trailer hooked up to it. It worked flawlessly and uh, did a great job on the towing. Uh, capacities of this of this vehicle so really happy about that all right guys well thanks for watching and uh, appreciate all the subscriptions and the comments really having a good time with this uh this channel uh and i'm really looking forward to the the newest project that we're adding to the fleet um probably have it sold in about a month or so i've already got people calling me for it um that knew you know knew that it was in that sea container and uh, is really interested in buying it, but uh, I'm gonna have a little fun with it for a little while and uh, make it a project, and I'll I'll keep updating as we go. So, thank you a lot for for subscribing, for watching. Uh, click the likes below, see the links below for anything that I've used in the videos, any parts that I bought, um, and hopefully you're gaining something out of this video. So again, thanks a lot. God bless. Take care. See ya.